Hello! In this practical work, you'll measure the pH and the buffering capacity of some aqua solutions. First, let's introduce some useful theoretical notions. Naturally, at any given moment, a small part of water molecules in a solution will dissociate, forming protons and hydroxyl ions. The protons are not stable in solutions, thus, they either recombine with hydroxyl ions to form water molecules, or they bind to neighboring water molecules forming hydronium ions. In water at 25 degrees Celsius, the molar concentration of hydroxyl and hydronium ions are equal with a value of 10 to minus 7 molars. To simplify expressing such low concentration values, Sørensen introduced the notion of pH, defined as the decimal cologarith of the molar concentration of hydronium ions. The complementary quantity, POH, is the decimal cologarin of hydroxyl ion molar concentration. Thus, at 25 degrees Celsius, the relation between pH and POH of water becomes pH plus POH equal 14. Acids are substances that are capable of donating protons, while bases are chemical species capable of accepting protons. Thus, adding acids or bases to solutions lead to changes in their pH. According to Sorensen scale, solutions can be characterized as neutral when their pH is equal to 7, acids when their pH is lower than 7, or bases when their pH is larger than 7. Numerous pathological conditions are consequences of pH imbalances of biological liquids. Hence, sustaining appropriate pH levels is critical in maintaining homeostasis of living organisms. Metabolic processes depend on the activity of enzymes, which is optimal only in narrow ranges of pH. For example, human blood is weakly alkaline, with a pH in the range 7.35 to 7.45. Higher or lower values of blood pH are known as alkalosis or acidosis, both conditions being incompatible with life. In order to keep constant values of pH, organisms use protective buffer systems which have the ability to keep pH values stable when small amounts of acids or bases are added. In this practical work, you will measure the pH of some buffer and non-buffer solutions before and after adding some volumes of acids and bases. Finally, you'll calculate the buffering capacity of the two solutions. For this experiment, you'll be using a pH meter, a magnetic stirrer, three buffer solutions of known concentrations, 2.1, 7.3 and 9.3, two solutions of study, one buffer and one unbuffer, an acid and a base solution, Berzelius glasses, magnet, magnetic road, a micropipette, and paper tissues. Plug the pH meter and the magnetic stirrer to the power outlet. Please note that the pH meter can be calibrated for either acid or alkaline domain. For the first part of this experiment, you will calibrate the pH meter for the acid domain using the following sequence of steps. Rotate the temperature button to set the temperature of the measured solutions. While the device is in the standby mode, rotate the set standard one button until the display shows the value 7.3, corresponding to the pH of the first standard solution. After rinsing the electrode, the Berzelius glass and the magnet with distilled water, fill the glass with the standard solution of pH 7.3. Place the glass on the magnetic stirrer and dip the electrode into the solution. Set the measurement working mode and rotate the button STD1 until the value 7.3 is obtained on display. Set the pH meter in standby mode and leave the measuring electrode. Attention! Don't cast the standard solutions. Pour them back in their containers. Continue by raising well the electrode and the Berzelius glass with distilled water. 
Attention! Always watch this whenever you plan to change the solution in the Berzelius glass. Pour the second standard solution of pH 2.1 in the glass. Place the glass on the magnetic stirrer and dip the electrode into the solution. Set the measuring working mode and rotate the standard 2 button until the value 2.1 is observed on display. Set again the standby working mode, take out the electrode and pour back the solution in its bottle. At this moment, the pH meter should be calibrated for measurements in the acid domain. Attention! Don't change the position of buttons Set Standard 1, Temperature, Standard 1 and Standard 2 to prevent the calibration of the instrument. Pour non-buffer solution into the measuring glass. Add the clean magnet inside. Turn on the magnetic stirrer and place the beaker on it. Dip the electrode into the solution. Set the pH meter in measuring mode. After approximately one minute, measure the pH of this solution and record the obtained value in the table. Using a micropipette, add 0.2 ml of hydrochloric acid solution into the non-buffer solution. After waiting another minute, read the pH value and record it in the table. Repeat this operation four more times and write all the obtained values in the table. Set the pH meter in the standby working mode. Stop magnetic steering, take out the measuring electrode and cast the solution in the sink. Rinse well all the instruments with distilled water. Using the previous methodology, Measure the pH of the buffer solution before and after adding small amounts of acid. Record all the obtained values in the table. In the second half of the experiment, you must calibrate the pH meter for the alkaline domain. This time, you will use the standard solutions of pH 7.3 and 9.1. After calibration, Measure the pH of buffer and non-buffer solutions before and after adding amounts of 0.2 ml of sodium hydroxide solution. Fill the obtained values in the table. Calculate the pH variation for each of the four solutions using the given formula. Calculate the buffering capacity of each solution using the given formula. Finally, represent graphically the pH variation with the added volume of acid or base. Draw two plots, one for the buffer solution and another for the non-buffer one. 